listen to an interview on top of a mountain talking about how to regenerate a whole watershed, how to see value again in a forest, a super overgrown forest that is, and how to connect a multi-billion dollar tourism industry with the source of its water. Join me in this wide-ranging interview from Spain, where we talk about water, the meaning of life, burnouts, farming, eggs, cows, and a lot more. This is the Investing in Regenerative Agriculture and Food podcast, Investing as if the Planet Mattered, where we talk to the pioneers in the regenerative food and agriculture space to learn more on how to put our money to work to regenerate soil, people, local communities, and ecosystems while making an appropriate and fair return. Why my focus on soil and regeneration? Because so many of the pressing issues we face today have their roots in how we treat our land and our sea, grow our food, what we eat, wear and consume. And it's time that we as investors, big and small, and consumers start paying much more attention to the dirt slash soil underneath our feet. To make it easy for fans to support our work, we launched our membership community and so many of you have joined us as a member. Thank you. If our work created value for you and if you have the means and only if you have the means, consider joining us. Find out more on gumroad.com slash investing in Regen Ag. That is gumroad.com slash investing in Regen Ag or find the link below. Welcome to another episode. Today we're in a very, very special place, the home of Stefan Dongen, our guest. Thank you so much for hosting us here. You're gonna hear a bit of background noise. There's a small airplane flying over and a lot of birds that are singing their evening song as the day is slowly coming to an end. Um, We're in a forest, uh, not a very natural forest. We're gonna talk about that, but in a beautiful place, a few hours north of Barcelona, in the direction, like the, the pre-Pyrenees, or the pre-mountains. It's definitely hilly. And uh, we're gonna talk about what brought Steph here and uh, what are his uh, plans and also what already has been done, which is quite a lot. So thank you so much for having us here and welcome to the podcast. Great to have you, Kuhn. <laughs> Finally, Steph has been yes. pu- pulling us for many <laughs> for years. three years, four years. <laughs> I mean, considering COVID and some family things, we, we were busy <laughs> and we... we um, we're waiting for the right moment to pass by, which is definitely now. And to start with, I mean, you're obviously not Spanish, so let's start with a, a short introduction to um, how did you end up on a mountain a few hours <laughs> north of Barcelona, um, basically trying to regenerate a watershed. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, it's great to have you and your beautiful family here. Um, and. Um, in the end, I ended up here walking uh, from the San Sebastian, it's basically the west coast of the Pyrenees. I walked to the east coast to find a, a place. Um, but before that, uh, why I actually started walking was my insight uh, during my time at Envy. I worked there for 20 years, um, basically in all over the place, all over the world. Um, And um, I say too much um, again. (laughs) Don't worry about it. It's a conversation. (laughs) Um, Sorry, where was I? 20 years of NVU, working everywhere. My 20 years of NVU, during my 20 years of NVU, I had um, a big insight uh, that the cause of the mass immigration to the big cities, where we were working a lot in the slums to find business solutions. Uh, for the social and environmental problems there. That most of the people went there because of their, their degraded soils. They were not productive anymore. They could not live there anymore. And um, uh, so I did some research. Uh, and during that research, I met Willem Verweda, who was just starting Common Land. Um, and uh, during our conversations, uh, we built a relationship and trust. And he invited me to be part of. Uh, the management team, the startup of Commonland in that uh, that phase, those first two years, and I was so inspired and also shocked, basically, that already 30% of the the world soil is severely degraded, and we are like on our way to degrade a lot more. Um, and the role forests uh, in the production of water, um, like a, lo- a lot of 
inside that inspired me and I thought that it, that made me decide, okay, all what I do at Enview, building this business, uh, um, to activist businesses, to create change in the world, actually do not matter anymore if there's no healthy soil, uh, no healthy forest that produce water, and uh, water is life. So. Uh, that's the short version. <laughs> I started looking for land when I was 35. So I, started, I looked for land for 12 years in the Nordics, uh, throughout Europe basically, and decided in the end it will be Spain. And then I made a journey, a pilgrimage, a pilgrimage to, to actually feel where I wanted to live. And you almost made it to the other coast. And basically, <laughs> if you start from Bilbao, you're, we can see all yes, the sea. Exactly. So. Yeah, it's a 900 kilometers uh, trip. <laughs> so, what made you choose, or made you connect to this place differently than other places you pass through? Because many are rural, many are degraded, abandoned. Yeah. Uh, one is the energy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, feel, uh, it feels very good here for me. The silence, the darkness, the, the remoteness. Um, it, feel, it truly feels like wilderness, of course, it's not because you're really connected to very close by Girona and Barcelona and this is a, a place with a forest area with a history. Um, and so that's my personal reason uh, and besides that I always wanted to be a forest guard. Is <laughs> it my childhood dream? So, now you have a few hectares. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Um, but the more, the, the more professional reason is this, this area is uh, basically 95,000 hectares, um, abandoned forest. Uh, it's a valley with a uh, watershed, the source of the Muga River, um, to, it reaches, till it reaches the sea. Uh, there are a lot of social, economic, ecological issues in this valley. And um, due to the, uh, its abandonedness, I say like that, yeah. Um, and my wish to actually create a demonstration case in Europe uh, for the transition of a, like an abandoned valley like this with all these issues to actually uh, hopefully a flourishing real regenerative economy that is thriving of life. And um, it ticks all the boxes. <laughs> and the challenges, yeah. And I think the second you said my first big insight, and there's a second one, which is fundamental here, because it's not that you bought these hectares, of course you didn't buy all of them, and you're on your, in the process of, of, com of buying more and basically uh, creating alliances with other landowners, etc., and, and creating this, this case of a forest that is not very natural and has a lot, a lot of opportunities, but you don't base it fully on, let's say, the agriculture or forest case. You, you had a second big insight of what a place like this could be for others as well to, to come here yeah. and, and quote unquote hospitality, which is yeah. a weird word in this case, and, and we'll let you explain better what you're doing here, and you create yeah. the home yeah. and, and not just. Um, living of forest products and, and farming no. products, which is definitely an important part. Yeah. But there's a, an, another driver that you, you didn't want to be alone on this mountain, let's no, say. You no, wanted no, other no, people no. to come, <laughs> and specific people to come as well. Yeah, yeah so the, the other the big insight uh, during my time at Enview is that uh, a lot of my peers, fellow change makers, uh, had the tendency to lose themselves in their passion <laughs> <laughs> and to slowly burn out. And um, which is a risk for the, the change making sector. Like if we exactly. lose people after five, ten, eight years for a couple of years when you burn out, that's yeah, yeah. yeah that's not something we, we no we can so we can afford. No, so I saw that and so people cannot be their most beautiful self or like they live their full potential. Um, and um, I wondered why I did not burn out those twenty years in those 20 years and uh, my, my insight was like I, I spent every year one or two months in silence in, in nature. And, uh, so even in the busiest periods of NVU, in, the, yeah. in those 20 years, yeah. you consistently, every, year. yeah. every 12 months at yeah. least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was a regeneration of myself, yeah. basically, uh, and it, it really worked well. And so, um, I wanted to create a safe space for change makers, basically, to, to regenerate, reju rejuvenate themselves, to connect uh, to nature themselves and their, and their inspiring peers. Um, and uh, so I created the home, the home for the pioneers of our time. Um, we can host here from eight to 60 people, 
Um, we have water from the mountain. We are very remote in the middle of the forest. <laughs> you drove up with your Tesla and I really <laughs> rented you for, for anybody <laughs> riding. Rented, rented a Tesla. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's it's the road is. I've seen worse. Uh. But it's remote. It's yeah. uh, a good 20, 25 minutes up uh, if you're not in a jeep. And, yeah. and, and the interesting thing is what I really noticed because we've been in quite a few remote places, remote farms, is that you don't see any other um, like ruins or farmhouses. Like your neighbor is all the way down the mountain, basically, yeah. pretty much. And that remoteness, of course, really helps with yeah. reconnecting. Like you can walk for... I wouldn't say days, Weeks. probably, probably pretty yeah, much without seeing another house. Like in the nights here, you don't see other lights, no. except all the way down the valley, which yeah. is really far. Yeah. And that's really unique. Like I haven't seen that in no. any other places. Yeah. And with all the the comfort and luxury you need, um, it, it's a very interesting, interesting combination. Yeah. And do you see that, like people come here and, like, w what's the the typical, how do you say, typical week looks like for people. Like they come here and they are they really high energized. Like like a group of change makers come here. Like, yeah. Let's say risk of burnout. What, what do you what do you do with them, or what do you offer them, or what do you don't do with them? Let's say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's more that. <laughs> <laughs> Go walk and sit. Yeah. yeah. So the concept is you come at my home, yeah. and so it's not a hotel that gets free. It's, it's not there. It's like you come at my home and you, you I have tried to make you feel at home. So everything is thought through. Okay, so what, what if you come to somebody's home? What do you want? No? Um, so that, that's one. I think that feeling, that, that feeling of welcome, being welcome and uh, coming home, homecoming. Um, it's really interesting, like we had groups from the UNFCCC, like uh, we have mayors from different cities and they come in their suits. <laughs> <laughs> and shoes. Which is not a fit here, let's say, <laughs> yeah. cultural fit, it's not a suit and, place. And yeah. they come with their laptops, a lot of people, um, or entrepreneurs, like even like, um, and within, well actually if people arrive, we let them walk down. So already the, the silence uh, grabs them mm -hmm. uh, and you see them, okay. Uh, what I do, what am I doing here in my suit? <laughs> and, um, and and so within within like half an hour, an hour, people are like trying making the first step of becoming themselves again. Yeah, and it's not that like you force, like you designed it that way because there's great internet. You can you can yeah. do amazing co-working, but somehow, of course, the outside and the inside design triggers you to yeah. not really want to be on your laptop, yeah. basically. No, the silence does it work, the forest does it work, um, and the vultures do their work. Like we have a restaurant for the vultures here uh, up at the mountain. It's super impressive if you see those three meter big It's really, birds flying like over. every morning you see them like with the right term, like term of energy taking their flight and yeah. seeing circling up, 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 and then going down the valley. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're big. Yeah. So basically, the, the theme here is like well-being, taking care of yourself, uh, rest well, eat well. We have all the food here from the valley, uh, ecological, healthy, very tasty and nice to be presented. Um, uh, and also take, like we call it co-working in the sense of like people can help each other, but it's like creating me time. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the things that actually are really important for you to, the, to do, but you actually don't prioritize because they're like your personal things, no? Mm -hmm. Like writing a journal or writing a poem or like reflecting on your life, what do you know? Where do you want to go for your next steps, those kind of things. And we really create space for that here. Um, and um, so this working actually on your, doing your inner work, that's basically what we facilitate um, by basically creating space and mm -hmm. taking care of you. <laughs> and then that again, quote unquote, hospitality side, obviously creates a nice revenue stream when done well, which is absolutely not, mm. not easy, but creates a revenue stream which makes you not completely dependent on the agriculture and forestry yeah. part, which is, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, brings a lot of people here, which is great. And then on the forestry side or on the land side, let's say, because this is a forest, you said, with a history. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a, a natural forest, whatever that mm -hmm. might mean. Like, what's the history of the place here? Why is there actually was there a ruin or was there a farmhouse that you could yeah. rebuild into a, a home? Yeah. Um, like it wasn't abandoned, you didn't start from scratch because you can't in, in Spain, you needed some structures. Why, why was there a structure on, on yeah. that mountain? 
Yeah, so first I will explain a bit about the history here and then I will go into more the, the approach I took to actually develop the project. Um, this side of the Pyrenees was basically a charcoal, uh, a charcoal production place. And um, so the farms that you see, the farm that you see here was historically uh, one of the main farms managing these forests uh, for charcoal production, uh, which led, which actually was the input for the energy production uh, in the Med Mediterranean here area. Um, so what you see here, uh, basically oak forest, beech forest, now you see a lot of pine, but they were, they were not here uh, 100, years, 100 years ago. Um, and so the trees were cut every seven years. So the, this is a specific type of oak, it's called a stone oak, and it sprouts like uh, multiple trunks on one root system. So they could harvest every seven years a new, a new uh, batch. Um, and that's what they did for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. uh, um, early 1900s, uh, oil and gas took over. And so within, within a couple of years, the whole thing collapsed and people moved away and the farms became ruins and the forests like exploded because if you keep it small for hundreds of years on the big, big root system, like you see, like, yeah, uh, it's like a 10x <laughs> volume of forest or yeah, more yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with invasive species like these pine trees that are everywhere. Um, pushing out wildlife. Uh, Basically closing the canopy, no light hitting around. Exactly. Redo starting to become a risk for fires, lower down the valley, yeah. low life, low biodiversity. Yeah. Yeah. No vultures yeah. anymore. Function of the, yeah, no vultures anymore. Response function of the soil degrade, degrades. Um, a lot of water has been sucked up by yeah. these trees. A lot of water has been uh, spread yeah. out uh, yeah. by these trees. And so the, 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 actually the, micro, the climate is also changing the microclimate. Um, so that's a bit the situation here and they talk about like... It's funny because you look at it and you see, oh wow, so many trees, of course with a, a non-expert view and then talk, like hearing now the story which basically means it's very overgrown and, and very degraded in terms of soil and, and biodiversity yeah. in terms of plants, etc. Yeah. So a lot of opportunity, but yeah. it had 100 yeah. years to explode and now it's yeah. it, and no large mammals or no large animals to, to maintain, no, nor, nor humans to cut or no. prune. <laughs> so no keystone species, yeah. No. People like abandoned the valley, like there's no economy here. There are actually a lot of uh, 60, 70 plus uh, people living here. So keeping all the, the houses occupied for the young people, uh, I have a lot of trouble like finding housing for my team. Uh, uh. Which we hear in a lot of cases actually, mm -hmm. like in these rural economies. Real estate is a is an issue, yeah. like housing, That's apartments right. for young families or young people that don't want to live 10 years in the yurt yeah. is, is an issue in... Uh, in, yeah. in uh, so, how I, well, so when I came here, like I first did not much for two years, I like actually really applied the concept of emergence, like to see what's the need of the land, what's the need of the house, uh, look at the people that come here, how did they flow over the land. No? Um, but I've quickly realized uh, that, um, well, at least people here in Catalonia don't see value in the forest. This to, so to create a business case with the traditional way of working, it's absolutely not, not possible or like it's you know, barely possible. Uh, agriculture here is, was basically uh, not present. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. Um, and so I thought, okay, where can I start? And also creating uh, cash, you know, like on the sh a short term. And so I decided to start with the hospitality uh, because I could start right away after some small construction work. Uh, well, <laughs> we're now three years on the road. That's it's not an small. understatement. <laughs> if you see the before and after, yeah. <laughs> Let's say in the, the the history of the forest, it's a small it's a small glimpse. Yes, but yeah. yes. No, we did we did a lot of construction, um, uh, and so by doing that um, and also realizing, okay, in order actually to to be able to start, I need to create housing possibilities for the teams that are coming here. Uh, we have now over twenty people, and um, yeah, they still live in Girona, Barcelona, Figueira, so, you know, <laughs> so it's a big problem, big, also cost-wise, paying for all the travel costs. 
Um, so but you wouldn't have guessed that probably when you started here that that would have been a bottleneck. No, 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 no no, yeah. no, 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 no. So yeah, so so with this vision, okay, creating this demonstration case for real regenerative economy, knowing that it's a huge project, I can never do it alone. I should always like involve other stakeholders. So where do I start? And what what would be my role in this in this project? So I said, okay, the first thing is. Um, lead by example and start doing it. So hospitality and starting real estate development was one. Uh, and while doing that, uh, with the profits from there, we created a forum. Um, uh, just to see actually, to revive the farm that was here. We put chicken, um, uh, cows, um, we did, um, we tried uh, essential oils, uh, didn't work. Uh, actually the cows didn't work either. <laughs> Uh, we had 50 cows here in the forest to see if they could open up the forest before we go into the forest and, and, and clean it. Um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a really interesting experience. Like the cows like preferred the football fields in the local okay. villages <laughs> above the forest. <laughs> so the first time easier that's, grass. That's yeah. a lot of fun in the front page. Yeah. But uh, after 10 times, people uh, don't uh, start to like to, tend to like it. Um, and we started to explore the forest products. And um, while doing that, I realized, okay, I need something more. Um, an innovation lab or like a campus where we actually pull in uh, universities, academics, innovators, entrepreneurs, funders to start doing this together. Because um, nobody knows what to do with no. a hundred year overgrown forest. No, no, yeah. nobody knows. Yeah. Especially not like uh, inaccessible like this on, yeah. on, on steep on hills. On steep hills, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so that was a, that's, a, that's actually already in development. It's an interesting, uh, interesting project. Another thing that we did is like uniting the valley. And so we started the, the Mooga Valley Partnership and was actually looking at the governance for the watershed and the forest, where well, you see on the one hand that there's a lot of forest actually producing the water and then on the other hand of the watershed in the Costa Brava North where millions of people every year go uh, using the water and they literally, literally say sit back to back, don't look at each other, actually don't talk to each other. We have here governance systems like with 26 villages, they never work together. <laughs> and they're all connected by the same river and yeah. the same watershed. Yeah. And, and yeah, you look at a multi-billion euro tourism industry yeah. down the valley that desperately needs water. Yeah. And, and every summer now is, is in shortage of, can we still fill the swimming pools and yeah. the showers and the hotels are running exactly. dry, etc. without ever looking at their, no. their watershed. Where does the water yeah. come from? Nobody yeah. asks themselves. Not from the sea, I can tell you. No. <laughs> it's not the type of water you want to shower with. No. So, so the urgency and the need to actually unite the stakeholders, the key stakeholders in the valley, the, the, the political field, the, the private sector, the people with passion is really uh, necessary and interesting thing to do. Um, do you enjoy that? Yes, I love it. I really love it to find the common interest no, of the people. And actually, after a year, we found it. So it's, it's easy, actually. It's, of course, the water <laughs> is the fire. Nobody wants fire. fire. Risk. Uh -huh. uh, and the, uh, actually, a sense of belonging, creating community between the villages, because people like not to create relationship and trust and, and do things together. And so those three things basically are the nucleus of the of the Muga Valley Partnership, the, the, the three topics that we work and collaborate on. Yeah. Um, well, and in that, the sense of belonging, the water side, and is the food part or the farm part also part of that, or is you say okay, let's start. Let's start with the forest because it covers so much land and it, it dictates so much here. Or how do you see the, the farming side of things yeah. um, developing or, or after your experiment with the cows? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so I actually started more thinking, okay, what, what do we have with the forest? Uh, I started, for instance, we started market gardens. Um, we call it market gardens. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because you need quite a bit of food, of course, in, yes, in the produce. hospitality part. Plus, there are, like you said, millions of people yes. staying here that for sure absorb a lot of food. Yes, uh, and so we started with that. Um, 
And what you see is the wildlife is a, a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> they eat everything. Yeah. They eat everything the first two years, forget it. Uh, we tried several things. Uh, and now you start to see, okay, uh, what can coexist, what can you go, what can co-grow yeah. basically with the wildlife, the, the wild boar, the deer, etc. And so we found like different types of herbs, different types of wild plants that actually like wild asparagus, you know, like things that grow here naturally and are not eaten by the by the by the wild. So f- much more on the, the foraging side and yes. the collecting in the forest, which yeah. of course for the people that visit here is, is an amazing experience as well. Yeah. Like to connect back to nature if you eat, uh, yeah. Yeah. collect wild asparagus in the right season, it's it's an interesting experience, plus yes. all the white herbs, wild herbs and all the, the smells, etc. Yeah. So that's one thing that, that we are actually looking into. Like we have been piloting for now two years uh, and actually now made a, are making a plan for the, for the coming five to ten years. Um, together with a consultant uh, specialized in regenerative agriculture, but also in, our, in, with, in, back in, the, in the back of our mind to make actually the investment plan for it. So one part is that food production, and the other part um, is uh, how can what can we do with the forest? The forest needs animals uh, to clean to clean actually um, uh, the understory uh, to prevent fire. Um, we tried goats. Oh, sorry, we tried uh, cows. They didn't work out. Uh, we will now try goats mm-hmm. uh, as the first animal. They will actually do the, the big job, and then see if after the goat we can introduce the sheep. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're making the plan for that, the business case, and it looks good. Um, so that's another part that we're looking into. Um, uh, producing our own food, because uh, we need uh, to actually um, provide extra food in the winter time. And so cereals is one of the things mm-hmm. that we look at in the fields. So we have now 15, 15 hectares of fields. Uh, we'd like to expand that to 30, perhaps 60 hectares. So which is in the lower part of the valley, which is yeah. not overgrown by the forest. No, no. So there, it's accessible at least with, yeah. with machinery, etc. Yeah. Yeah. And And the water part, coming back to it, like, have you seen the first, I mean, you united the valley, let's say, but the first connections through the water with the Costa Brava Nord, like the, the, uh-huh. the people, let's say, by the sea? Has that been, is that a next step? Or when do you see, like, have they been up here? Has there yeah. been any connection yet? Or is it more, okay, we first have to unite this valley before we, uh, before we start talking to, to the people down the mountain? No, no, we, we're already talking, actually, first uh, people that came up were the politicians, mm-hmm. funny enough. So we have the Minister of uh, Climate Action and Agriculture here. Uh, Which is the same? Yeah. Ah, yeah. that yeah. says something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And biodiversity actually and forest CS4, CS4 wow. things. Yeah. Uh, and she, uh, we had like, see two weeks ago I was there with the whole, uh, their director generals and uh, the secretary of states, whatever. I, I don't know all the, I don't know. But it's interesting in a progressive region like we are, First of all, that those four themes, and it's a she that helps. Yeah, like yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were three C's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And two males, yeah. and what was the what was their reaction? Is not the right word. But when they arrived here, like what's what 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 was the biggest surprise for you? For me, not the big yeah. The actual the biggest surprise for me was that they really see the urgency. Okay. They really like uh, it's an alarm phase, and I did not expect that at all. Okay. Uh, it, was, it was a beautiful thing, uh, well, welcoming thing, uh, because then it's there's you know, they're recept- they're receptive yeah. for the message. Um, and, uh, well, uh, you always have to wait, like it's, a, it's, po- it's a politics, or like, uh, but, uh, yeah, they publicly state that, uh, and uh, they're really open to collaboration. So it's not only war- words, it's yeah, not only talk, yeah. it's also actually, actually also the walk. We created, uh, basically on, not on their initiative, but the collaboration that came out of this, uh, a research group, a research coalition, is going to do a baseline study on the valley, uh, on the well, quality of soil, but also the water situation, and also how the water is being used, in, in, because there's a lot of leakage of water, spilling of water, basically. Uh, <laughs> one, um, one of the persons in that meeting said like if the, on, on Thursday it's farmer's market and there was a camping owner yeah. and he said uh, 
I have more water in the summer if there's market than in winter because they just let it go. <laughs> Slow. So the irrigation yes. is just on because yes. they are at the market. Yeah. Yeah. So there's more water in the river in summer than in winter on Thursdays. So it's like uh, this, this was a, for me a very strong wow. image. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's not seen as a precious resource no. yet. No. Although I think the last few summers and and this we're in a very dry period now. We're yeah. recording this in March, 2023. Yeah. That it hasn't rained for forever, hasn't snowed no. enough or at all. No. So this summer is going to be scary yeah. so the, yeah it's alarm phase yeah. it's red like yeah. we're deep in deep in red yeah the, the lake is at 30 percent in winter <laughs> so this is mostly after summer yeah and yeah that means fire risk way up a mountain that hasn't seen that for a long yeah. time uh, yeah. and so there's the, the the baseline and then what's your long-term strategy with the land i mean nobody sees value here so you, you've been able to buy yeah. quite a bit and, and are in process of maybe buying more. Like you said, we might go to 30 or 60 hectares in terms of arable or, or fields that we can use. And, and that comes with a lot more forest. Are you planning to buy the whole valley and then be the big landowner? Like what's your vision in terms of yeah. um, the ownership of, of all this land and, and all the potential? Because yeah. as we hope, there will be a flourishing regenerative economy um, based in yes. this valley. Um. Yeah, so the strategy from the beginning has been it's a 100,000 hectares valley. Uh, if I create, if, if we create a laboratory, actually zone an area of 5,000 to 9,000 hectares where we can actually do experiments, uh, pilots, research, um, uh, whatever is necessary actually to, 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 to fuel this regenerative economy. Uh, and that would be like a, a sizable f f uh, f area that's actually um, interesting for universities to come in, for politicians to actually declare this area as a sort of innovation zone. And so we look at the farm ideally between five, nine thousand hectares. Um, and my, my vision for that is like to break also the cycle of um, uh, access to land for, for young farmers, for farmers in general, I think. So what we try to develop, what the intention is to develop is like a sort of an app store. We see the land as a platform where our developers, uh, farmers, uh, could be uh, um, psychologists, it could be tourism operators, it could be any, anything. Foresters. Foresters, <laughs> yes, of course, uh, that operate on the land and develop their, their, their application. And um, by doing this, we make it much easier for people to, to get access to land and, uh, and, and, and develop it. And to, make, and to use actually the multifunctional aspect of the land because you have, uh, yeah, it came from the root system to like mm -hmm. the air, <laughs> to medicinal value of the, of the forest. Uh, the, the, so you can we look at it as a, the forest is in a multidimensional way and also multidimensional use and that is actually what we offer in that's what we want to offer in this platform. And for me, um, I don't have children. Um, uh, I have a foundation. So my in the end, my my goal will be okay. How can we bring back the land back in the commons, the end of the commons? Yeah, because the multi, the app store analogy here requires that you don't have to pay an enormous rent on the land yes. uh, or lease on the land and that it won't be sold yes. to whoever because suddenly we're going to be in a biochar boom and, and the forest has a value again and and everybody that <laughs> was doing nice forest work or yeah. whatever will be will be kicked off so yeah. the commons and the land ownership discussion of course is the yeah. the elephant in the room yeah and so there is like um Governance, access. It's governance, access. It's also financial models that actually uh, provide a horizon of, like, I would like to say, seven generations to actually be able to re keep on maintaining and regenerating the land, and that doesn't exist at the moment. Yeah. And so that's why it's a hundred years overgrown. Yeah. Yes. And, and and so that's why my strategy is okay. I, I first buy it united, 
and create this campus, this innovation lab, to actually, a big part of that will be on that topic. Like what's the future of finance, uh, future forest, and the financial model behind it, how can we re keep it, uh, or help it actually, it's because it's a forest will do its own thing. But how can we help it to come, come back in balance again, and, and for seven generations? Um, yeah. So you use your wealth and investment money to buy and then transition it to, to the commons yeah. in, in due course. Yeah. And then the rest of the 90,000 hectares that, it's like you mentioned, 100,000 yeah. and this will be five to nine. What, what is your vision for? for the, yeah, so the, the, what we are doing with the Muga Valley Partnership is basically looking at what governance model would, could be uniting the, the different gover governance models that are there already but are not governing the watershed. <laughs> and so how can we make the watershed the, the principal, the principal, I say that? Um, driver? Or driver yeah. of this governance system and the forest ecosystem. So the quality of the water, the quantity, the... The, the, the water, the forest, uh, there's, and, and also like, what will be the, what will be the, what will be the foundations of this new economy? And I think the regeneration of the forest and actually all the works that have to be done to actually secure the future water supplies, it, there's so much work. <laughs> and, there's, there's and, and I'm looking down the valley, the, the Costa Brava Nord would be nice if they somehow pay for that. Exactly. If there so, is a connection between who uses and who produces. Yeah. And, uh, it's the entire year for the economy. Yeah, there you have a, a stream and it's... I mean, it's nice that we talk about water and not necessarily about carbon, which could be a potential driver for, for short-term cash or cash in general, mm -hmm. but water is very, I mean, it's tangible and intangible at the same time, but it sort of flows down. It ends somewhere in a, in a sea or a large water body at mm -hmm. some point, and you can follow it and track it and actually measure, like you can, there's, yeah. and, and we have a, a deep connection with water and watershed and not necessarily with the carbon cycle, no. which is uh, <laughs> actually not at all. Like, everybody that calls carbon sexy is, uh, is probably wrong or delusional. So there's, there's an interesting, yeah, it's an interesting model with, of course, a region down there that really needs water mm -hmm. and, and a reliable source, a clean source, because there's, there are literally billions on the line because mm -hmm. tourists won't shop anymore if their yeah. swimming pool is empty. And, and there's a whole valley that can provide that, and, or at least that's what we hope in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a different model. No, no, it's model. already scientifically yeah. proven. That's research we have. Yeah. Uh, we can actually, this pre projected over the coming 25 years, we will lose 30% of the water volume, mm -hmm. the current water volume. And like two thirds of that is directly related to non -act being non-active in the forest. Wow. So, yeah. Two third. Yeah. Imagine, yeah if you get active, plus what kind of restorative research comes out in the next decades on, on yeah. what triggers water, what triggers rain, what yeah. triggers this big seed, it's called the Mediterranean, to, to bring in more clouds or bring yeah. in more hum humidity and make sure it falls here and, yeah. and before it reaches the Pyrenees. Yeah, and, like, and, and this is exactly what you say, like, this valley, it could be in itself then the demonstration valley for Europe, because there are thousands of valleys like this with probably similar problems. Like, there are thousands of watersheds <coughs> that are not maintained or not thriving, let's no. say, or they're an, an under, somebody called it underperforming ecosystem. Yeah. Right? They could do so much more. Yeah, and it's interesting because I think it's a global trend, like in all the rural areas, no, being abandoned at the moment. Well, actually. The biggest challenge for humanity <laughs> lies <laughs> lies in the rural areas. It's How do you re regenerate those soils and forests? And I can say, fr friend of the show, Abby Abby Rose, calls the farmers and land stewards, and I'm for sure butchering the quote, but uh, the key decision makers of our time, and and we don't give them that no. power. Like if they decide left or right, it determines everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and somehow we we haven't come around that yet in mm -hmm. in the cities and in the. In the hotel. So, what what do you see when when we look at this landscape? We're in in this landscape now. We're sitting on, on two beautiful stones. There's a dog sleeping down there, <laughs> and we're surrounded by birds, as you can hear. What do you see when you see this? Do you see an overgrown pine forest, and you think, okay, we need to we need to get to work, or what does this this land now, after being here a couple of years, what effect does it have on you? 
Um, it's a great inspirator and teacher. I must say, I uh, never lived fully in nature for four years in a row. Mm-hmm. You always did a month or two. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like uh, amazing if you see like like a sort of a, every day something is happening and there's a rhythm. Uh, every year around the 14th of September, you know, the roaming of the deer starts exactly two weeks, you know, or like the swallow flying over at, at 19th of August at seven o'clock in the night, come <laughs> to eat. <laughs> and you can, you can put your watch on it. And it's like those kind of things, um, uh, yeah, you can, you get to sort of, uh, becomes family. Mm-hmm. The land becomes your family, or, they, or I become their family. <laughs> I became their part of their, a uh, brilliant part of it. Um, it's really special, energetic. So I don't see. I, I see the forest is suffering. Uh, it's asking, you know, uh, either to burn or to uh, to be helped in back bringing brought being back in balance. Um, that's what you see, especially in summers. Um, you know. But it gives so much energy and inspiration. I do my silent walk in the morning at seven. And uh, now you see me running around like but I have so much energy here. <laughs> yeah, but you also had that before. Let's let's be yeah. fair. Yeah, it wasn't that you were <laughs> laying on the couch a lot no. in, the, in the 20 years of MVU. Yeah. And, and when the people come here, and especially you've had retreats here, and of course a lot of impact investors and investors and people working in the big banks, etc. cetera, what, what do you see, like after a week they spend here and they, they connect, what what do you see as the biggest transformation with with people with wealth or in control of money? Mm-hmm. What have you seen, and that this this valley affects them or the home affects them? I, I see that a lot of people recognize their need to be in connection with nature, and they come back uh, sometimes four times a year. <laughs> yeah. Repeatable customer, very yeah, good. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's good. good case, you don't have to explain in things no. anymore. Like they come, they know where the fridge is, they know yeah. things work, they know the Wi-Fi code. Yeah, yeah. but the recognition of, okay, mm-hmm. this is a fundamental need uh, as I, that I have as a human being. I think it's the first one. Um, and people get really silent, so there's space to reflect. Uh, and we talk about a lot about um, nature as a teacher, but also the values uh, um, and how you reflect on life, and, and you know the, the purpose that that you that you work on, and those things. Uh, I think a lot of people don't take time for, and that uh, has a lot of impact because here you can come for a week or two weeks, or sometimes people come for a month, and. Um, uh, see, actually, like you said, like change people, it's like changing jobs uh, or taking important decisions in their life. Uh, yeah, so they take, they use this time here to actually reflect and, and prepare those decisions and things. Sometimes not knowing that, well, <laughs> well coming, but <laughs> well, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't need to be in the brochure. No. <laughs> be ready for important life decisions. Yeah, maybe no. Probably it shouldn't it be in the happens. brochure. No. It happens. <laughs> Who cares, as long as it happens. Yeah. So, and, and I actually, um, I promote also, like, okay, this is, this is important to align, uh, basically, what you believe in um, and what your values are in, with how you invest, or like, not even you invest, like, how you spend your life energy. But also your investments, yeah, yeah. because otherwise you get this huge disconnect that we've both seen in, in, in Tonic with people that, with amazing life values and then investments, portfolio full of fossil fuels yes. and sugar companies and yeah. Coca-Colas of this world. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> how do you sleep at night? Yeah. Like, how does that yeah, reflect? Because that's, yeah. yeah. 
you can you can drive your Tesla, separate your waste, yeah. have amazing solar energy, but if a lot of your wealth is doing horrible things, yeah. it's uh, or or in your job you're putting money to work. While we're talking, it actually starts to drip a bit. Yeah, and uh, very little, not enough at yeah. all, but <laughs> still good. Like, how do you yeah, how do you reconcile that or connect that? And what would be your main message for? Because many people listening, unfortunately, cannot pass by here because of calendar, distancing, distance, etc. What would be your main message from from the home to to them, especially people in like in entrepreneurship, in in like manage resources, either their own because they're really mm -hmm. good at building companies, or um, money which could fuel other other people to to build. What would be your main your main message from the mountain? Hmm. My main message from the mountain is to um, if you cannot come here, find that spot somewhere else near close to by where you can be in silence and connect with the nature and also feel that you that it's not separated from you it, it we are nature like this is also a big insight that I have here and that I had here like you remember when that happened like was there was that a gradual process because it sort I feel that that's the big switch yeah and you remember when that insight I came see this or? happened uh, I the, the realization of it happened during my walk, those 900, mm -hmm. 900 kilometers. I was, yeah, two months by myself uh, with the animals around me, with nature. And like realizing that this soil is basically a composition of us all. I will go there too. You will go there like one day. Our ancestors are lying here. The animals that are walking around they, before us they make this soil. They're like giving us their nutrition, so their nutrients. And um, and so everything comes from there. The, the trees. It's a, it's a being. It sweats. You know, it drinks water. It's like it's a it's a slow river, basically. <laughs> it pumps the water up, which yeah, is yeah, 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 defines yeah. Yeah. physics. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And, and for me, that's 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 yeah, that, that's. You said the realization came on the walk. Yeah. And did it? That saying it like that sort of suggests it landed when you were really here. Is that fair? Yeah. Actually, I always had the feeling mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I was a young boy already. I really felt in resonance with nature. And uh, then life took me, and so you lose a bit. You feel that you're out of resonance. Or you, no, no, you don't feel really that you're out of resonance, but if you're in nature, you feel really in resonance. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that realization came really strongly here, yeah, after yeah, being here for so long. Yeah, and now like, <laughs> I go as, off, as, as less as possible from the, down the mountain. <laughs> Without becoming a hermit, but... No, you have people coming up the mountain, you, you have the, yeah. the, the, the luxury or the great pleasure of hosting people here, yeah. which makes sure you don't become a hermit. Yeah. And what would you do differently, actually? You've been here now four years, five mm -hmm. years into it, I think. Yeah, four, yeah. Looking back at, at those years, any big lessons learned or the, the main thing you would do different or actually you would say, actually, Spending the two years on looking at emergence and looking and seeing what's happening and setting up the partnership and mm, I'm seven years ahead of planning, so <laughs> I make my first planning. That's that's a first on the podcast. Somebody says I'm ahead of planning with yeah. with these kind of extreme ambitious projects. Yeah. So it's faster than you thought. It's much faster than I thought. The farm not really. The farm I learned a lot and I'm still learning and I think I've, if I would have. No, no. I you think wouldn't have taken the 50 cows, maybe. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, because I had to learn that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I true. I had to take. You could learn with 20. Yeah, no, but yeah, there's, there's. A yeah, 
you plant a lot of trees that didn't make it, but yeah, yeah. it's also yeah. lessons, pay, payments for lessons. Yeah. yeah. So nothing big. If you would start somewhere like the next valley, let's say, you would do differently? Of course I will take learnings from here that I, would, I think I... Um, I don't know if it was possible, but like I would try to find the right uh, mentors around me. Uh, I started with a lot of local people. Of course, and that's good because like they know the valley, they know the forest, they know the, you know, they have the connections here. Um, I think I could have taken in more international benchmarking. Mm -hmm. To, to go even faster. Yeah. <laughs> well, faster, I don't have to go fast, but I mean, I mean, then I think we do. You see the forest suffering. We see yeah. summers that are, I mean, um, yeah, yeah, lakes on thirty percent. Like that, that's probably also seven years bef like ahead of schedule. Yeah, and ahead of scary yeah. schedule. Yeah. 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 Um. And and the question we like to ask. Inspired by John Kemp and his great podcast on where do you think differently than others? Um, normally we ask it on, on, let's say, regenerative agriculture, but I think in this case on regeneration it's fair. Like when you are with, with the groups in, in the home and where do you see where you really think differently with, with most people that visit here, like people that, uh, fellow change makers that, that, that spend a week or a month, etc. here, where are you? Apart from the fact that you live on a mountain, but where do you think fundamentally different? Where are you contrarian, let's say? Yeah, that's a good question. You asked me before, but <laughs> you thought you escaped it. No. Yeah. <laughs> there must be something like could be compost toilets are not that bad, or like or something much more deep or fundamental. <laughs> Where do you like? What surprises you in that? Like, do you think, oh, come on? No, I think the App Store thing is well. Uh, the metaphor, metaphor for the App Store is is different for people. To see the land as a platform, yeah. Or the, the valley, even. Like, yeah. That's yeah. Um, yeah. I think the aspect of well-being and taking care of yourself is also very important. I think. It's interesting that you started this not because you burned out, yeah. which is quite a, an interesting yeah. realization. Ah, I never burned out and everybody around me did, yeah. <laughs> so I should make sure that the next generation doesn't or the next wave, but yeah. not because you had a severe burnout yourself, oh. which is interesting. I think also the long-term perspective that I take mm -hmm. is different. I think in 20 to 40 years and, and like um, actually the plan that we make for the forest is a thousand years because the Texas tree here can become thousand years, so like, you have to think about that. <laughs> That's also a thing, long-term thinking. Then I think the financial aspect, also for me, money is a means. Uh, of course, you should be really careful with it and, and, and do good management, but... Uh, so yeah, I take also f from the money aspect, the long-term perspective, and also the return for me is much more than financial. It's like. If in 10 years we have the water level at 70%, that's a return, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, and you might figure out a way to get paid for that. Yeah, yeah but, yeah. But the return, the, the important piece is the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an important, of course, I don't throw away the money. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, a part actually is a donation or like a subsidy or a grant, sorry. Uh, that, that we... Uh, actually get from generous people around me. Um, yeah. <laughs> the dog is signaling that we're... Sorry, dog, yes, we're boring, sorry. Yeah, we're boring. <laughs> sorry, dog. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a good... I mean, how, and, and that's a big question to answer. How do you put a value and whatever that non-financial value is on a, a thriving valley? You know? produces endless amount of yeah. relevant, very relevant things that actually without that we can't survive. Like yeah. I said somebody, actually somebody we both know, but I'm not gonna quote, I'm not gonna mention her, 
said something like, but an, a risky investment, or it was, let's say financially it was risky, deep in regeneration, and the advisor said, oh, this is a very risky investment from, from a financial point of view. And she said, but it's very risky not doing it. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. And that's, that's the time we're in. Like, yeah. It doesn't mean you should throw away your money, you put it on fire and et cetera, yeah. but you should be very diligent with it. Of course, this is not financial advice, but we are in a time of yeah. quite desperate measures. And, yeah. quite, uh, and I'm lucky to find people that think along, uh, aligned on yeah. that. Yeah, they find. I mean, if you connect here, you walk in here, and you you fit. That that's mm -hmm. probably a mm -hmm. a good filter. If you make it up the mountain, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with whatever car you brought, mm -hmm. or um, yeah, preferably a four by four Jeep, <laughs> um, or let's say a higher, like it's just a higher ground clearance yeah, yeah. is better. <laughs> and let's see how we get down tomorrow. But <laughs> that that means something. The fact that you come here, it's it's not remote, remote, but still remote. If you like, there's nothing around, and that means you're you're search, searching for something or looking yeah. for something at least. Yeah. And I can imagine many people find it here. So I want to thank you so much for the conversation, the hospitality, and yeah, and for the work you do. Hope to see you back soon, <laughs> and all your listeners. <laughs> all the thanks, good. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. For the show notes and links we discussed in this episode, check out our website, investinginregenerativeagriculture.com forward slash posts. If you like this episode, why not share it with a friend or give us a rating on Apple Podcasts? That really helps. Thanks again and see you next time.